This is David with Best Rest Products, home of the cycle pump tire inflator that has a lifetime warranty. Today we're testing oil filters. Uh, I wanted to see how oil filters work, how they perform, and most importantly, can I substitute another oil filter for the specified oil filter for my bike. In this case, the bike that I was testing for was a 2005 BMW R1200 GS. And this is the filter that, uh, that would normally go into the bike. Uh, we have a chart that shows all the filters that we tested in this process. There's 12 of them total. Six of them are about the same size, height and diameter, and six of them are non-standard size, which means, depending upon the bike, they might fit, but in my 1200, the distance between the bottom of the engine and the skid plate will not allow those to fit. But I thought it would be interesting to test those anyhow to see if I could get this to fit, like on my 800 GS, would that filter be an uh, adequate substitute for the OEM filter? Here's the filter for the 1200, and here's a cut apart filter for my 800. And even though this is cut on the 800 so we could see what's inside, you can see that the, the depth of the, eight, or of the 1200 is much less than the 800. Well, why is that? Well, because on the 800, it's in front of the engine and it's got more room. In the case of the 1200, it's hanging down below. Sometimes the size of the filter is a function of how much room the manufacturer has allowed for the filter to fit. So, uh, generally speaking, the larger the filter, probably the better the performance. But what are we going to do today? We're going to use the Best Restium oil filter testing system. And we're going to run, uh, we call it radioactive, but it's really just glow-in-the-dark uh, Best Restium, which is 20 to 50 microns in diameter. We're going to mix that up in a slurry using our Osterizer blender and we're going to run that slurry through the filter and then collect it in a bowl and then take photographs. That way we can actually see how much contamination passed through each filter. We'll collect it in plates and we'll take photos. The way the system works is this. We pre-charge each filter, meaning that we fill the outer circumference of the filter with oil, let it soak into the fabric, and then We'll screw it onto the bottom of our testing system. We have a special thread. This is just like I was screwing it onto the bottom of the motor. And then we'll take 200 cc's of our slurry and we'll inject it through the filter and it will come through the filtering media and it will come out this tube and we'll collect it in the plate and then take the photographs. We'll be doing this with six filters that fit my bike and six filters that are oversized that wouldn't fit on my 1200 but might fit on another bike uh, of that style. Before we begin, we need to learn a little bit about oil filters, how they work, what they do. We're going to have all these charts and everything available here on the website, but here's a cutaway of a standard oil filter. The oil comes from your engine sump and from your pump and it comes in on all sides in the small holes around the circumference. It then passes through the filtering media and then comes up and exits through the large center hole and then goes on to lubricate the parts of the engine. But there's a little bit more to this than you might think. For instance, there's a bypass valve that's shown in yellow and every filter has one of these. The bypass valve is found at the bottom of each filter. And what it is, uh, depending upon how the manufacturer made it, it looks like a button or it may be a, a, a fitting. What it does is it allows oil to bypass the filtering material under heavy load or when the engine is cold. When you first start your motor and the oil is like sludge, the filtering media can't move enough oil. And so every oil filter has got a bypass valve. And that bypass valve opens at about 20 PSI.
when that bypass valve opens, none of the oil is going through my filter media. It's coming through here and it goes directly to the motor. What that means is that for a period of time until the oil warms up or the demand for oil reduces, you're not getting any filtering at all. It's just going right past the filter. And this is common and, and true in every vehicle. How often you roll the throttle on uh, certain conditions, this valve can open a number of times uh, every time you ride. There's another variation of these oil filters. Everything pretty much remains the same. The oil comes down, goes through the filter, you have a bypass valve. But one other thing that you may find on filters is what's called a check valve. And a check valve is a little silicone or rubber ring just inside the opening of the filter itself. And what this does is it's a one-way valve. It prevents oil from draining back out of the filter when the oil is, or when the filter is on its side. If an oil filter is left like this, it will normally drain back out into the sump. And that's not desirable because then you have to, when you start up the motor, you have to fill the cartridge in order to send oil to the engine. So by having a, a drain back or a check valve, that prevents it from happening. And you can see that check valve on a cut apart mobile one filter. Just inside where the filter is, there's a one way silicone valve that opens to allow oil through, but when the pressure drops, it closes and prevents oil from dripping out. So if this cartridge was filled with oil and I tipped up like this, the only oil that's going to drain out is whatever's in the middle, but the rest of the cartridge would remain filled with oil and that's a good thing. Not every filter has it. In the case of the BMW filters for my 1200 and for my 800, it doesn't have it. So it may not be that big a deal, but if you do have a filter that's got a bypass or a, an overflow, a drain valve, that's a positive thing. <clears throat> Depending upon the size of the cartridge, you know, the size of the container, that's going to determine how big your filtering element is. This 1200 is pretty small, and I've cut it all apart, and I've taken out the paper filtering material. And in my charts and graphs, I will show you exactly how much filtering material there is for all 12 cartridges that we test today. And I'll also measure the thickness of each one. And that gives you some data to work with and look at. And you'll find out that some filters have a huge amount of filtering media. Usually it's a cellulose or a paper material. And some don't have very much at all. I didn't count the number of pleats because I don't think that's important. Instead, what I care about is the square inches and the thickness. And we've come up with a rating system that we call the filter potential, which is the size of this filter uh, times the thickness of the filtering material. And hopefully that will give us a number that we can work with. But the real key to the, the test that we're going to perform is how much best restium slurry will each filter pass as it goes through the filter and goes into our plate. Note that when we do this, we're not providing enough pressure to kick in that bypass valve and allow the oil to flow through without being filtered. We can't provide enough pressure with our syringe. So we think we've figured all this out. We think we have a, a good testing medium uh, and a good testing protocol to get some Mark I eyeball answers to how well each of these filters work. The one thing that I noticed about the BMW filter that I cut apart that I really like, yes, it's got filtering media and it has a bypass valve in the middle, 
But one thing that it has, and also KN has, is it's got a small wire mesh screen that fits on the bottom underneath the spring. When the bypass valve opens, because the demand for oil is too high and the filter can't meet that demand, you are still getting some level of filtering from that tiny wire mesh screen. That's a positive thing. And of all the filters that I cut apart, uh, the only two that had them were the BMW and the KN. So those are positive things. Molly, who we're also going to be testing, they make this filter for BMW. These filters are identical. The difference between the Molly and the BMW is only that wire mesh screen. So points to BMW and to KM for having that emergency bypass valve screen. You're going to get some filtering when the bypass valve kicks in. We've mixed up our best restium with our motor oil. We used 50 grams of best restium, which is strontium aluminate, which glows in the dark uh, when subjected to ultraviolet. That's what's in the blender right there. We've also taken the filter and we've pre-oiled the outer side so that we've saturated the filtering media so that when we push oil through this, we're going to get a full 200 cc's, which is the big syringe. So regardless of the size of the filter, we'll get the same amount of oil so that we can take our photographs. There won't be any uh, differences in the amount of oil that's in the final plate of oil that we photograph. So this Volar oil filter has been charged and we plug the hole in the middle so that we don't get anything on the inside. Next we'll take and thread the filter onto our manifold until we get to where the o-ring is tight. Now basically this is effectively the same as having it attached to the motorcycle. We take our syringe and now we're going to put 200 cc's of best restium into this syringe. And now we inject the filter with the best restium and it'll come out the exit port. And it's coming out now. And it's coming all over my shirt. So we put 200 cc's through this Volar filter and whatever we show in this plate will tell us how much of this best restium passed through the filtering media. In between each test, we'll use brake cleaner to clean the manifold so that we don't have anything left over from the previous filter that we're testing. So we'll set this plate aside and we'll move on to the next filter. Next we're testing the BMW OEM filter. This is the part number specified by BMW for my motorcycle. We've uh, pre-soaked the filter so that the outer side is filled with oil and it's soaked into the filtering material. We've made sure that our mix is good. And we'll put in 200 cc's into our syringe. And now we'll inject 200 cc's through the BMW OEM filter. And it's coming out now. And we have it all in the plate. Now we'll take this plate and lay it down with the other filters 
and when we're all done we'll take photographs of everything and we should be able to tell which filter allowed the radioactive bestrestium to pass through the filtering media. Here's our process for cleaning the manifold every time we change the filter. We use brake cleaner, we spray it into the exit manifold and we clear out any contamination that may have been in that pipe uh, so you don't get any false readings. And then we'll wipe everything off to make sure it's nice and clean. And we're ready for our next filter. Next we're running the high flow filtro. Stir up our mix. Add 200 cc's. And let's inject that through the filter. Oil is coming out. And we'll set this aside to compare with the others. Next, we're testing the KNN filter. And the oil is coming out. And we'll set that aside for analysis. Next we're testing the Molly. This is identical to the BMW filter with the exception of the wire mesh on the bypass valve. And here we go. And we'll set this aside for evaluation. Next we're testing the MAN filter. Next we're going to test a rather unusual filter. It's made by Flow. It's the PCS-4B. And unlike all the other filters we've tested so far, this one is a reusable, washable filter. It's got a hard uh, aluminum machined case. In this case it happens to be painted black. And unlike paper filters, this has a wire mesh screen, which according to the manufacturer you can flush with brake fluid and reuse this filter. I included this because, uh, although I'm not sure it would actually fit on my bike in the space allowed, uh, some people uh, seem to be interested in this and I thought it would be fair to add this to the testing protocol. Cartridge goes inside. By the way, my wife is very uh, understanding when it comes to her turkey basters. There's been many a Thanksgiving when she went to use it and had to go out to the garage and clean the oil off. The purpose of the priming is to make sure that we've filled up the outer area of the filter so that when we push our 200 cc's through we're getting the same amount in the plate. 
Interestingly, of all the filters that I've tested, this one has the hardest backflow or pressure required to push the oil through the filter. Some of them went pretty easy. This one's requiring some pretty good elbow grease. And we'll set that aside for evaluation. I want to give thanks to the guys at Cyclops Adventure Sports. Uh, they make high performance LED bulbs, headlight systems for motorcycles. Uh, they let me use their lathe to cut all these cartridges apart and if it wasn't for them I'd still be cutting them apart using a hacksaw. So thanks to Cyclops, we're one of their dealers. Great lights for your motorcycle. Next we're testing the Mobile One. Now because this has got a uh, anti-drain valve we had to bypass that valve by using small screwdrivers to open that up so we could uh, prime the cartridge itself. Note that the Mobile One is an oversized cartridge. It may not fit on my BMW. Next we're doing the Fram PH6063. Again, this is an oversized filter, wouldn't necessarily fit on my motorcycle. But we wanted to test a Fram because that's a very common, popular brand. And we have our oil coming out. Next we're doing the Napa Gold filter. Next, we're doing the Wix. This again is an oversized filter, wouldn't necessarily fit my motorcycle. I'm going to put this on the table for review. The final filter we'll test is a very cheap, inexpensive SuperTech, $2.84. The last filter we're going to test is made by SuperTech. I don't remember where I bought it, but it's a very low grade filter, uh, $2.84. You notice that we've got a clamp on our fitting here. Uh, it's because the threads on that filter were not actually metric like all the threads were on the other filters. So we're squeezing it in place so that it doesn't come off when we run the test. Well, we've completed our tests, we've collected our data, we've taken our photographs, and we've compared those photographs. Remember that the purpose of this test was to figure out which filter would be a suitable replacement for the BMW OEM filter which is number four down there. Uh, we were surprised by some of the things that we found and we rated the filters based on what we saw from the images that we looked at. You know, we've got a chart that we created uh, and I'll show that in the video. And in that chart we came up with what we call the filtering potential, which is the size of the filter material times the thickness and we thought well, maybe that will give us some usable data. But, you know, as, as so often happens, uh, numbers don't always tell the truth. Um, you can argue the results of this test. Just remember that we did everything exactly the same. We injected 200 uh, cc's of best restium into each filter. We collected the tray and set them aside and then we uh, took photographs of that. Based on our findings, the way we rated these filters that fit my BMW 1200 is the Molly and the K&N came in uh, equally well. Either one would work fine. Followed by the MAN and the BMW OEN. Those were right on par with each other. Followed by the High Filtro, which had uh, a bigger pattern of light, which means more 
uh, contamination. And then finally, the flow filter, which is the only reusable cartridge filter in the entire test. When we tested the oversized filters, the filters that would be possibly suitable for a car or for like my 800 GS where I have more room, um, the way we rated them was the Mobile One seemed to have a much better filtration than the others. It was the best overall. Followed by, surprisingly, the Fram. And when we look at the filter and we measure the material, uh, it has a fairly low uh, square inches of filtering material. And then the Napa Gold and then finally the wicks. The wicks ended up at the very bottom of the heap simply because of the amount of contamination that we could see under ultraviolet and using the camera lens. Now, I realize that's going to cause a lot of uh, uh, discussion because a lot of people are very uh, uh, brand loyal to Napa Gold and wicks. All we can do is report what we find from our tests. It's been interesting. We've learned a lot and perhaps we'll make another test uh, making some changes or adding some more best restium just to see what we get. But for now we're done with this and we're ready to go uh, have a cocktail. Anyhow, this is David with Best Rest Products, home of the Cycle Pump Tire Inflator that has a lifetime warranty. We'll see you on the trail. Oh, that's the end of a long day of filming, let me tell you. Yeah, uh, that was a, a long day, all right. All right, my dogs are barking. I think it's a wrap, though. Uh, it's a wrap. That's Cheers. For sure. Cheers. Cheers to you. <clears throat> the 1040's got a much better flavor than the 2050. Oh, yeah, 1040 is much better. Yum.